Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back. We are back here Wednesday, uh, Beth English and myself here, your uh, Sergio Gomez. And we want to talk today about the future of art galleries. You know, what is the role of the art gallery, you know, maybe five, 10 years, 20 years from now with all the new social media tools that we have with the accessibility that artists have directly to consumer and so on. Art galleries is still viable. So mm -hmm. that's a big question. And uh, we're going to share on that today. Be before that, I bet good to see you and a uh, great topic that we had last week for our friends who may have missed it. Make sure you go back and you check it because it was really, really great. We talk about resilience. Yes, we need that. And we need that when it comes to galleries, I think, too. So <laughs> I can't think that wait applies to get into just, this. <laughs> yeah, that applies to just about everything. And uh, the other day I was talking with a friend uh, who's a professor in a university in Michigan, and uh, we were talking about, you know, the what's the future of galleries? We were talking particularly about the pandemic. You know, he's also an artist and how, you know, we're talking about how, uh, you know, during the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, artists were still selling online and collectors were still buying online so that brought the the question like well you know if if i'm an artist and if i can sell directly to a consumer you know as many artists are doing um do we still need galleries do you know they said that they're still viable and uh so that was kind of like the question and then we began to talk about a lot about you know the role of the gallery too and mm -hmm. particularly because i own a gallery for the last uh, 16 years so you know, why in the world do galleries exist and will they still be needed, you know, five years, 10 years from now, why not 20 years, who knows, right? As we move forward and as the world changes as well, uh, one of the one of the uh, kind of parts of the conversation, we talk about how many galleries also closed down mm -hmm. after the pandemic because uh, they couldn't stay alive, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they have the resilience of it or the financial support or or the mechanics to continue to stay alive. So uh, that's the topic I want to discuss, you know, and uh, Beth, I'll start with asking you, uh, what do you think about galleries <laughs> before I share my my opinion? Well, I think they have a really important role. Um, it just depends on your model as an artist. Are you selling, you know, uh, from you direct to a customer or is it something that you want to work with people who are doing it commercially? I know for myself, I work primarily um, with um uh, interior designers and galleries who are placing art commercially. And so for me, the role of the gallery is very important or the art representative is very important. And that doesn't mean that I don't sell direct to customers, but I like, um, want to pos position my work to be in public spaces. And so working commercially has been a way for me to do that. Yeah, no, that's great. And actually that brought, that's a great way because uh, what you said, because that was kind of part of the conversation in which we we were talking specifically about, you know, what happens when you as an artist, right? Or, or you know, we as artists, we sell a piece directly to an art collector. Uh, we ship it from our studio directly to that person's house. Uh, and that is great. That's amazing. We, you know, we should continue to be doing that. But all of a sudden, you know, we, we lost the opportunity to ever showing that work to a larger public you know, outside of the digital device, mm -hmm. which uh, the art gallery, when you think about it, is also a forum for people to enjoy art in person, even if they cannot buy it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is great. I mean, I think we, all of us who uh, wanted to become artists, you know, how many times we visited art galleries, commercial art galleries, not to buy the art, but just to enjoy it, just to see what artists were doing, because it was a public forum, which you can walk in, doesn't cost anything to walk into an art gallery and just enjoy art in person and see it and, and, and absorb it. And uh, when the gallery or that forum is non-existent anymore, when it goes from studio to the wall of the collector, which is, again, is great. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that because I do that too. But uh, the importance of having that forum in which a public can also participate and enjoy that work. Um, mm. You know, and, and I think that is such a such an important part of what the gallery is. A lot of times we see the gallery as just commerce. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, the gallery is a business. You know, if it's a commercial gallery, it's a business. With the business in order to stay open, you have to sell and you make, uh, you know, business decisions in that way. But however, it provides this other forum for by which people can walk in. Uh, and, you know, of course, the, with the, uh, the traditional art opening that brings mm -hmm. people of all walks of life. You know, if you walk to, and you've been actually to our openings here in Chicago, but you know, you see people so well work a lot. You see art students, you see, uh, you know, people who are wearing a suit and others who are just wearing a, a ragged t-shirt. 
and that's the beauty about you know art that can bring all these people together and uh, and, and give them the experience of being in front of a work of art and i think uh, you know a lot of times we forget about that part of mm. the role of the gallery which i think is so important it is so important, you know, having access to art, I think is something that all people should be able to have, which is why I love public art so much. Mm -hmm. And I love that, you know, there's companies out there and businesses that incorporate art into their design. And it's because they want people to have a certain kind of experience with them. And that's what what I love to do. I love for my work to be out in the public more because I have a specific mission and message with my work. And the more people I can reach with that, the better. And, you know, if that turns into a commission or some type of like work for someone in particular, that's wonderful. But like my primary focus is to really get it out there in public and galleries as a great way to be able to do that, especially get some credibility, legitimacy around your work as well, because you've been selected to be there and that's important to do. But I think as an artist, you need to see the bigger picture. Are you only working with galleries or are you doing a little bit of both? Like, what does your model look like? Who are your customers? How are you getting work to them? And think about it on a, on a grander scale so that if you need to incorporate a gallery um, into your business model, then, then, then do it. But like galleries are extremely important, even though artists can sell their work on their own online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think in that sense, you know, for myself as an artist, I see the, you know, the benefit of both, right. And, uh, you know, this beautiful thing that we all have now, this accessibility to our customers uh, directly and also the galleries. And I don't think they're enemies, you know, a lot of times, you know, they're seen like either or, and, uh, they're not enemies, you know, that we can actually coexist. I, I think of, a uh, an artist who can participate in both, you know, in, in the direct to consumer and also in the gallery system, you know, as a hybrid artist, you know, because you can mobilize more, have more options and, and work, uh, you know, create your, your own opportunities also in that way versus you don't depend on one or the other. A lot of, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of artists when, uh, the pandemic hit and many galleries closed, a lot of artists uh, ended up without a gallery, uh, representation or a gallery at all, all together. And now they're starting from almost like scratch again, starting mm -hmm. to build up. So I think there's a big value, as you said, you know, uh, on, uh, being, being able to cap into both worlds and because the gallery system, I think is here. I think it's evolving. I think it's going to change a lot too. Uh, you know, we saw during the pandemic, as many galleries were closed, uh, many opportunities open up to do online exhibitions and online programming. And then I think as the world begins to open up again, that doesn't mean that that's going to end. I think now that's just more an addition to what the gallery may be physically doing, which is again, now brings more opportunities for artists where a gallery may have, you know, a, a physical show and simultaneously two or one or three online exhibitions that are mm -hmm. happening. So it, it's actually reaching out more people. So I don't think the gallery itself uh, is, uh, is dying. I think it's evolving. I think it's mm -hmm. changing. And I think I look forward for uh, newer blood, like younger um, artists and galleries uh, coming up with new ways of presenting uh, and, uh, you know, promoting art to, to, the, to the people. Right. And they're not all created equal either. Exactly. So I think it's important to do your research and see who's the best gallery to align yourself with. Like, for example, I know in Nashville, there's some galleries that don't really have a clear vision about the work that they show, but then there's other galleries that are always doing exciting exhibitions or creating a lot of momentum. They have a great, you know, reputation for that. And so therefore collectors are attracted to that type of energy. And so I think there, you have to really learn about the gallery and, and how they, you know, what's, what's their vision. And if that, aligns with you, great. If not, then don't maybe work with that gallery. Or if a gallerist has a bad reputation, you know, for not treating their artists as well as they maybe should, you know, it's important to know all of these things and, and not just try to get a gallery for a gallery's sake, but mm -hmm. try to think of it as a partner in, in the work that you're doing to get your work out to collectors, because you can't beat um, the, the network that a gallery has with their collectors and what an opportunity, right. To open your work up to that network. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's uh, kind of like the end of uh, this quick chat, uh, Beth, again, talking about the future of galleries. I think there's a lot still to see. 
I think uh, there's a lot more coming. I really believe, you know, with this close that when this whole pandemic's over and people are starting to go out more and more and more, uh, I think there'll be a big thirst for, you know, uh, arts and culture. And I think uh, artists and galleries, you know, will have a big role to play in that. So we just gotta be resilient and, uh, you know, work our way through this, uh, this situation and look forward to, you know, bigger and better years ahead. So thanks Beth uh, for joining me in this chat and to our friends, if you have your own opinions about the gallery system, do you think galleries will be around for, for still a while? You know, are they viable still as an option for artists? Let me know, let us know here in the comments. And Beth, what kind of friends can connect with you? You guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Beth English. My website's bethenglish.com and I would love to connect with you. So send me a DM and let's chat. What about you, Sergio? Awesome. You guys can find me on Insta, Sergio Gomez Art, as usual. And my coaching program, you can find it at theartistnextlevel.com. So have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in a week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye, Beth. We'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.